Today we're at the Western Chozon Seoul, a luxury 5-star hotel located in Myeongdong to see if we can eat our money's worth at their all-you-can-eat buffet, the Aria, which is priced at 170,000 Korean won or about 130 US dollars. With the grand interior, it's no wonder why people flock here to enjoy luxurious staycations. As you can see, there's quite a lot of seating. However, you most likely will not get a seat during peak season times if you don't reserve a spot on their website ahead of time. Fortunately, we got a table seat right next to the window which had a nice scenic view, but honestly, since we were trying to eat as much as we could, it was pretty hard to sit back and enjoy the ambiance of the buffet itself. Now, Ray and Allison are huge buffet experts. They told me to study up and make a plan of which foods I wanted to eat ahead of time. Considering we have a time limit of two hours, we'll see if we can eat our money's worth in food. Please keep in mind that while I did try my best to find the prices per item cost, according to market prices in Korea, they may not be entirely accurate depending on inflation and, of course, the strength of your respective country's currency. I'm sure the hotel itself would typically sell these delicacies for a higher price anyway, Way, so I pretty much undershot the prices just to be safe. The buffet is divided into different sections based on the type of cuisine. At the very front of the first row, we have the sushi and sashimi corner that includes various fish and crustaceans such as salmon, tuna, and shrimp. If you want sushi, they actually make it for you on the spot and take specific requests. They even had a separate corner for sauces and sides, arguably the section where you could get the most bang for your buck. Across from this section in a separate row, we have another area dedicated to heartier seafoods such as lobster, oysters, and other side dishes that are a carefully curated combination of various seafoods and vegetables. Directly to the right of the raw fish area contains more Chinese-based foods such as fried rice, sautéed shrimp with chili sauce, orange chicken, mapo tofu, etc. Moving on is a section with more western-based foods such as pasta, pizza, steak, lamb, and ribs. Directly across from this section next to the lobster station is a large central area with various cheeses, beef tartare, boring salads, their famous kimchi, and a variety of smoked and curated vegetable and meat dishes. Next, we have foods that originate from South Asia, such as naan and various types of rich curry. And then we have another section with more Southeast Asian delicacies. You can't tell clearly from the video itself, but there was dim sum as well, which I actually stayed away from because I heard it wasn't that good. Surprisingly, eating takes a lot of strength, and what better way is there to get energy than from coffee? Fortunately, for all the coffee addicts out there, there's a coffee bar where you can order Hotel Chozon's famous lattes, rich black coffees, and other drinks as well. Now if you want something warm or filling, it's your lucky day as across from the coffee bar is a soup and bread section that also offers rich butters and oils to complement and satisfy your carb addiction. Last, but definitely not least, is a paradise of desserts located directly next to the coffee bar. Now that I've gone over all the sections, let's get eaten. I would say there are mainly two stages of eating to my strategy. First is a trying everything you want to try phase, which is pretty self-explanatory. Second is the eat what's the most worth it phase. Basically, all the expensive stuff are things that I just love so much that I would eat again. My first plate had some tuna, salmon, crocker, sauteed shrimp with chili, and my first ever experience with mapo tofu. The sashimi fish were all exquisite, but honestly, how can you fork up sashimi? Never mind, don't answer that question. The sautéed shrimp with chili was just the right balance of savory and sweet with a little kick of spice that made my mouth water. The mapo tofu was delicious, but I don't think I can really judge it on its authenticity since it was my first time trying it. Keep in mind, they do also serve unlimited wine and provide water and seltzer water. It tastes like faucet water. Everybody could only order one soda without an additional cost, but if you order a soda, you can't get unlimited wine, unless you pay extra. My second plate was filled with smoked salmon, various cheeses, beef tartare, wasabi crusted tuna, and spiced braised beef. The smoked salmon was a little bit too smoky for my taste. The cheeses were pretty decent, but again, in Korea, it's really hard and expensive to find cheese, so I'll take any opportunity I can get to eat it. The beef tartare... Well, beef is expensive, but I've definitely had better versions that aren't as bland. The wasabi crusted tuna was very rich and had a very soft texture, but I would say it could be a little more seasoned. 
I was particularly surprised by the spice braised beef because it was just so rich in flavor and it literally melted in my mouth. Unfortunately, however, when I eat too much beef, I get really sick, so I try not to eat too much of it. I told myself I would try not to drink any liquids to save some stomach space, but I was eating so many savory foods that I eventually gave in. Next is our funky friend, the lobster, which I had trouble fitting onto my plate. Fortunately, they do provide utensils to help your experience. Honestly, I think lobster only tastes good as a kid because you think it's real fancy, because I wasn't really impressed at all. It was just so much unnecessary work to eat and it killed a lot of time. I guess it did work up my appetite a little more though. On the fourth plate, I decided to grab some naan, butter chicken curry, chana rice, a Bombay masala potato, grilled abalone, and lamb rib. The butter chicken curry definitely met Korean standards as it was strangely sweet, giving off a more tomato-y vibe. I understand that butter chicken curry can be a little bit sweet, but bruh, this was too much. The chana rice was just good, nothing really special about it. The naan was a decent texture, but I've had better naan for cheaper. I loved the Bombay masala potato because the sauce was a delightful amount of savory and the soft potato kind of just bursts in your mouth with the flavor that it soaked up from the sauce. Not gonna lie, the grilled abalone was bomb. Usually, shellfish like this is very chewy and tough, but it was perfectly grilled to a consistency that made it very soft without losing its sea-based flavors. The lamb was alright, but I think it could have been a little bit more tender. As you can tell on my fifth plate, I only wanted to try a few other new things and I had extra space, so I loaded my plate with more raw fish as well as squid, ink, focaccia, and insigni butter, which is supposed to be really expensive. Carbs aren't efficient if you're trying to eat as much as possible, but when else am I going to try squid ink focaccia? It was honestly alright, but I feel like you could just eat sourdough and that would be a much better experience. The butter was a perfect consistency. Somehow, it was on the verge of melting, but still maintained a solid form, so it really spread onto the bread like a glaze. The taste itself was not too buttery, but just the right amount of savory. Surprisingly, at this point, I was still raring to go and was about 25% full. On my 6th plate, I really went for where the money was with the shrimp because this stuff is like $6 per slice and they're so small and relatively easy on the stomach, but I also wanted to try the spicy shrimp curry. The curry was just rich enough for my taste, but was still missing that kick you would expect from the name. So I guess both curries were kind of a dud. This next clip basically sums up how I felt after eating this plate. <laughs> And here's a clip of me arguing with Allison because she's trying to bully me into bringing her a coffee. JK, she just took a sip from mine. Side eye! Okay, I swear they grow their own specialized vanilla beans and have some sort of family guarded secret recipe for this stuff because the vanilla latte was actually the best coffee I've ever tasted. And that's saying a lot considering I did a whole 25 days of 25 cafe series and I've probably been to over 50 different coffee shops just in the past two years I've lived in Korea. Like, this isn't your basic vanilla syrup from Walmart. Obviously, coffee goes best with dessert, so for my 7th plate, I had to grab the strawberry shortcake, grapefruit, grapes, dragon fruit, and golden kiwis. The cream on the cake was so soft and had a subtle sweetness to it, which is just to my liking. Fruit is really expensive in Korea, so I never really get to eat a lot of it compared to when I lived in America, but this was definitely a good bang for your buck move, and all the fruit was just really sweet and ripe. Also, warning, the grapes had seasoned them. At this point, we had like 15 minutes left, so I was yeeting food into my mouth hole. Now, call me crazy, but hey, caffeine also helps with bowel movement, and the vanilla latte literally had me in a chokehold, so I got another one as well as their regular hot latte. The hot latte was pretty good, but if I had to choose between the two, the vanilla latte will always be my alt bias. Now for my 8th and final plate, I had around 7-10 to 10 minutes to grab it and eat so I got more fruit and their shine muscat jelly. 
The jelly wasn't your typical jello consistency, but it was a good balance of sweetness from the jelly and sweetness from the fruit itself. Here's the final count for everything, including the quantity of each food I ate and the estimated prices per unit. And the grand total is... <laughs> now just some final thoughts. I think for a first timer at this place, my strategy was solid because I was able to try everything I wanted to and had at least one other round with my top picks. If I had to do anything different for the next time, it would be only sticking to the raw fish section, potentially trying their other types of dessert, and of course, ordering more vanilla lattes. A big shout out to Ray and Allison for indirectly sponsoring this video because it was actually their birthday present to me as they fully covered the cost of the meal. But wait! There's more. I'm trying to decide if I need to throw up or pee or poo or all three. Do you want the hot dog? Isn't that what you Are want you crazy? Dog? I will literally explode. I gained one kilo. Bruh. Do you think you could eat your money's worth at this buffet? What are the top three foods from this video you want to try? Feel free to comment down below as well as suggest any other places in Korea you want me to try for you. See ya in the next one. <sighs>